So first of all, big thank you to everybody who was able to join the stream today. The stream was titled Gnome 40 Sucks, Let's Fix It. And you guys did help me fix it with all of your suggestions of wonderful GNOME extensions. And that is what we're going to be doing in this video today. We are going to be going over 10 awesome GNOME extensions that are definitely well worth trying out. And at the end of the video, we are going to have a couple different bonus ones that will be added. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned till the end of the video so you do not miss those ones. And the very first extension that we're going to be taking a look at in this video is going to be Vitals. This one is absolutely essential for me when I'm in KDE Plasma. I have something just like this on my bottom taskbar. And this will give you all the information within your system that you would like to know, including your temperature, memory processor, some system information, network storage, and actually much more than what you are seeing here. If I click this little settings toggle, you can see that the vitals settings panel will open up and you have some other options that I do not have selected, such as the monitor voltage, monitor fan, uh, the ability to monitor your battery percentage if you're on a laptop, that's something that is incredibly handy. And you have some other things such as second between updates. And if you want to go ahead and actually change what's displayed on this bar, all you do is go under processor, for example. You can see I have the average checked if I wanted my frequency to show up. I'd give that a click and then now you can see that my current processing frequency is displayed up in the top. So that is our first GNOME extension that is Vitals. And then for number two, we have Arc Menu. Now you'll notice that this whole bar is different. We're gonna be getting into that in just a bit. But first things first, Arc Menu right here. Uh, if I go ahead and click on my menu, instead of opening up the uh, full screen thing with all your applications and stuff like that, you have a menu. You can see I have the Windows 7, I mean, Windows 11 layout currently selected because I just came from that. It's what I'm used to, but I do think overall it's beautiful. Uh, to go ahead and change some of the settings, we could just right click and you could get a whole bunch of different things here, but we could just go to Arc Menu Settings, and here is going to be a lot of the things that you can go ahead and configure. The Display Arc Menu is on Dash to Panel, which is going to be coming up here in a little bit. That's another extension that we're using. But with this Arc Menu, you could change the positioning, all the typical things that you'd expect, but what, what makes it really special is the menu layout. They have a ton of different menu layouts. You can see I'm using 11 right here. But if I go down under traditional, you can see we have like mint, no menu, budgie, uh, arc menu, brisk, all kinds of different things. If I go under mon modern menu layouts, you can see we have windows, which this takes it. So I'll just switch to this for example. Let's switch to windows. And then if I open this up, you can see I have my frequent applications here, as well as some of my pinned applications here. So there, there's just a lot of different layouts to choose from and you could go ahead and dive further into the customization of the coloring and all that. Additionally, you could customize the menu through here. It gives you a ton of different options. So you can really make it truly exactly how you want it. All the way down to button appearance, you can see I just went with the small little fedora icon. But you could also get really in depth with the appearance such as color, hover color, active color, things like that. So Arc Menu is definitely an application that you should consider checking out. Now the next one definitely isn't really a necessity, but I just think it's pretty cool. If I open up this activities panel here, you can see that instead of getting that boring, bland, gray look, it kind of blurs and it looks good with my uh, desktop background. And that's done with Blur My Shell. Now let's jump into the settings for that. If I go over here, go to Blur My Shell, hit the little settings thing, you can see right here we have our brightness, our sigma, the actual items that you want to go ahead and blur. So if you're not using other extensions such as this uh, dash to panel one that I'm using, you could really go specific with what things are blurred. But just to show you an example here, you can see the current blur effect. If I switch it down to zero, if I switch it down to zero and go out, you can see I just get that solid black or I could pump it real high, or well, let's go where I was. And then you can see the blur effect. And there's other settings too, such as the artifact hacks, dash opacity, and a couple other things. So just nice little utility that is definitely worth checking out. Now next up is custom hot corners. This is another pretty simple little utility here. Uh, you noticed earlier, I went down in this corner to get my activities menu to come up. That's just something I prefer because I like to throw my uh, mouse up here to open up the menu. 
And the configuration for this is pretty simple. If I go into that settings panel, uh, you see you can get pretty in depth with what you can actually do with it. So for example, the only thing I actually am using right now is the bottom corner. I have it show my activities overview, but I could change that to really whatever I want. For example, if I set it to like run command and I can uh, show the run command prompt and then if I throw my cursor back there, you can see now the run command prompt comes up and I'm going to hit escape here and switch that back and you could do a lot of different things. You can do the uh, option so the control key has to be selected. You can do the different mouse movements, whether that be with your scroll wheel, middle click, whatever you want and you can set custom ones for custom monitors such as monitor one, monitor two. You could set certain keyboard shortcuts and then you have your options here for like the delay, how the workspace switcher works, things like that. So that's another pretty useful utility. Now next up we have dash to panel, which I briefly mentioned a couple different times. And that is this up here. This whole top bar has been switched out from the standard gnome shell top bar with dash to panel. And that's what's allowing me to add these uh, shortcut icons, for example, and actually minimize and maximize things to this panel as well as move things around and customize them. And it does give you a lot more options than you would in your normal GNOME top bar. So if I go dash to panel settings here, you can see I have all these different position settings, icon sizes, uh, panel intelligent hiding. Right here are the orders of the items that are on the panel. If I go over to style, you can see those icon sizes as well as the opacity options. Behavior, action, fine tune, you have a lot of different settings that you could go in and go through and really customize it to make it exactly how you would like it. Even down to like right here, keep original gnome shell top panel. If I select that, I can keep that gnome shell top panel. And then for example, position, I can move it down to the bottom. So then not only do I have my little bottom dash to panel here, I have that original gnome shell top bar up here. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and undo what I just did. There we go. So that is dash to panel. And I didn't mention everything that I mentioned will be linked down below, obviously. Now next up, this isn't a huge utility, but it is definitely handy. It saves you a couple clicks throughout your settings menu. And this is the sound input and output device chooser. And to access it, you just click up here to change your volume like you normally would. And then below these different inputs, you can see our line out. If I click that, I have all my different options so I can actually change what the line out for the audio is, as well as input. But right now we're using this and I don't want to screw up the audio of this video, so I'm not really going to play with it too much. But that is definitely one of those must-have extensions, and that takes us to one that's not really a must-have, but really nice to have, and that is open weather. You can see here on my dash two panel, I have my time and date, and right here I have the weather. So if I click on that, you can see right now where I'm at, the weather is smoke, which sucks. It's the wildfire season up where I'm at. So that is my current weather. Unfortunately, it's smoky and hot out. But this is really nice because like, it gives you that current stuff you'd expect. The uh, It gives you the sunrise, the sunset time, the overall weather for today and tomorrow. And if I go ahead and go to this settings panel here, you have some typical options that you'd expect to be able to change, such as your locations, your weather provider, your geolocation provider, you could change your units. So if you're not in the United States, you could have the proper units displayed. And then you have your layout so you can customize how it actually looks and then some about information. So that's a nice little tool to have. And then that takes us to our next item, which is impatience. So if you're like me and you are impatient or you just have like to have just too much control and options within your system, impatience is the tool for you. So if I go down and I open up the settings for impatience, um, it really only has one setting. You have your speed scaling here. And what this will do is it will change the animation speeds within GNOME to whatever you want it to be. So for example, I could bump this up to two to be incredibly exaggerated. So now if I go down there and I go to my activities overview, you can see the delay in the animation. So if you really like to see those juicy animations, you could go ahead and set that. Or if you completely hate them, you could disable that, go down and it's basically instant. Me, I like to have it somewhere in between 0.25 and five, cause for me, that's perfect enough. So that is impatience. And one of my favorite tools is the screenshot utility. Now I take screenshots all the time, so this is perfect for me. Right here, this little camera button, 
you can select area, select window, select desktop. And what's really nice about it is this capture delay. So if you're somebody like me who's in like VirtualBox, for example, or you're trying to take a picture of an animation that you want to do in like five seconds, that's really nice. So select area, for example, I can select this part of this wheat plant. And then you could see it took it. I could copy or save it, whatever I wanted to do. I'm gonna close it out for now. You do have some settings. You can see the picture right here as the last picture I took. So you don't necessarily have to interact with it right away. It is kind of saved here for you, but I could just clear it to get rid of it. I could also go to settings, and then this will bring up some of the different settings that I have. So you have the show indicator, uh, you have your primary button, what it will do. You have different effects, so you can rescale. You have different commands. And you can see there, they're giving you an example with a GIF or a GIMP command. So you can go ahead and open whatever screenshot you took in GIMP immediately. So you can change the default file name and actually auto save it. So it will automatically save with a specific file name wherever you would like it to. You have options to have it automatically upload online and then various key bindings. So it is a pretty in-depth tool for just a simple GNOME extension. And last but not least, we have Tiling Assistant. Now this one, I'm still kind of learning it because I just installed it today after the stream and I need to spend some time with it. But just to give you a brief overview of what's going on, it mimics a lot of the Windows snapping features. So for example, if I throw this over here and let go, you can see it's giving me various applications I have open that I could automatically snap over there. Uh, additionally, I can't really show it, but on my ultra wide, it allows me to split the windows easily how I would want to on like Windows 11, for example. And if I go ahead and slide this out and actually open up the settings for this, you can see some of the options that we have and it is remarkable the types of things that you could do with it, such as window gaps. You could have windows window gaps on maximized windows. What I'm really looking forward to learning is the custom layouts. So we have the option to make our own custom layouts for various things that we're doing, which is gonna be nice for me because I like to have windows certain ways when I'm doing like recordings or live streams, things like that. We have Pi menu, you have various key bindings that you could go ahead and set up. There's not a whole lot of key bindings, but enough that it gives you some pretty good control of your system. Uh, one thing is these are all keypads. I unfortunately do not have a keypad, so I'm gonna have to uh, rebind some of these keys. And I'm not sure if it works quite yet, but a really good alternative to this would be Pop Shell, but I'm pretty sure it's still on 3.38. When Pop Shell comes to GNOME 40, I'm probably gonna be switching it out. But for now, this tiling assistant is awesome. And that actually brings us to a couple extras. Those, we went over 10 of the main ones, but now I want to bring up two extras that are very handy to have. And the first one you've seen me interact with a couple different times, and that is our extension list, this little puzzle piece right here. You open that up like you saw me do numerous times throughout this video. You have a list of all your different extensions. The little dot beside means it's enabled and you have these shortcuts to your settings, so that is a very handy tool to have. And the other one that I use or have been using quite frequently as of today has been this clipboard indicator, and you can see all the different things that are in my clipboard. You have private mode, you have clear history, and you also have a pretty good chunk of settings here to be able to configure your little clipboard indicator as you see fit. And with all that said, that concludes the video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Again, thank you to everybody in the live stream who recommended all these different extensions to me. Uh, I've been in GNOME like this for like three days now, and without some of these extensions, I probably wouldn't be able to handle it because uh, the default vanilla GNOME just does not work with my workflow. So with all that said, I do hope you all have a wonderful day. If you like this video, give it a like. Make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. Um, yeah. See you guys.